Next, I want to talk to you about the VCA. Uh, usually, I don't end up talking much about the VCA in any synthesizer demonstration because these days, the VCA is often just a volume knob or some means of applying the envelope to the uh, amplitude. So usually, there's not much to talk about with the VCA which is, again, why the CS-15 is special, because it has functional VCAs, and not just one, but two. And like I said in another video, how many uh, vintage analog synths can you name that have multiple VCAs that aren't modular? Uh, not too many. <laughs> so this is a weird thing. This is a synth that has two VCAs, and that's really special, and I'm gonna show you why. Okay, first and foremost, if we look at the VCA, we have the ability to choose which of the two envelopes controls the VCA. So often in analog synthesizers, uh, one envelope is dedicated to the VCA and one envelope is dedicated to the VCF. Uh, <laughs> because this synthesizer has so much opportunity, you get to decide which envelope controls the VCA. So for example, right now, we have it set to envelope generator two, which is just the sustain all the way up, which is usually how I demonstrate synthesizers so that the envelope doesn't give character to the oscillator or the filter. Pretty boring. Um, but you know, and here's the thing, if you're playing live and you wanna switch your sound, even just with a sawtooth coming out of the VCO, uh, filter all the way open, going straight into the VCA, we can get a different sound by switching to envelope generator one. So you have the ability to make live changes. So if you're performing, you can switch a sound, the nature of a sound with one little tiny switch like that. And that is really fantastic. But uh, overall, it's better to have the ability to choose which envelope generator you want to direct to your VCA, let alone which envelope generators you want to direct to your VCAs, because there's two of them. So that is a really neat function. You'll notice, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I have the envelope generator all the way up. EG depth, that is the depth to which uh, the EG that you have it set to, envelope generator, is controlling the amplitude of the sound. So you can actually turn that down if you want to make your envelope more subtle and quieter in regard to your amplitude. It kind of acts like a volume knob. Here, let's do it with EG1 so you can kind of hear the, the effect a little bit better. What it's basically doing is it's making the envelope smaller and less distinct as you turn it down. So you can uh, use it as a secondary mixing source or if you wanna just bring something back a little bit in the midst of your playing or whatever, or if you just want a more subtle version of the envelope because you're directing it somewhere else where you want it to be more intense. Those are all ways that you can use the EG depth. And then we come to one of my favorite things that synthesizers have, because whenever they have them, someone has sold the synthesizer for far less than its value because their complaint is, hey, how, how do I turn the synth off? It's always on, it's always making noise. And that's the initial level. What that does is it circumvents uh, the amplifier, it circumvents the amplifier altogether and directs the output from the filter to the output. 
So you're not actually controlling the volume of like for example here, a whole half of the synthesizer. When you turn that on, it is the hold function, but you get to decide to what degree it's going to hold. And usually what people do is they don't realize that the initial level makes it so the amp doesn't work and the envelope attached to the amp isn't controlling the amplitude. They just think it's broken because it's always on like so. Oh, I'm playing it but it won't stop playing. The envelope seems to have no effect. Why won't this change anything? It's broken. I swear I have gotten a synthesizer for a song simply because of that. Also, the first time I got a Moog Sonic 6, I was on the horn with the place I bought it from going, hey, why won't this thing shut off? The ARP 2600 also has uh, something like this, and it caused actually several things like that, and uh, it causes always the same problem. But it's great, though, if you're playing and you want the sound held. Because then you don't have to activate the envelope to open up the amp so you can hear the sound. You just hear the sound and all of its various effects going on irrespective. See, I don't have to play this. That is awesome. That's a very useful thing for us to have in a synthesizer. And yet, so few synthesizers, so few vintage analog synthesizers or even modern synthesizers have the ability to have initial level. They often have like a hold button or something. But here's the thing, say you're someone who is playing, but you would like actually to have the sound bleeding through a little bit as you are. Just let's get an envelope here. You'd also like a little bit of sound rumbling in the background. You can do that. And there are even more applications for that than my sad demonstration just now, but it's it's a great function. So now we get to something. Okay, we're still talking about the amp here. This is amazing. This is the most I ever talk about an amp. Uh, we also have the ability to modulate the amp. And this is a function that, you know, a lot of times people are like, okay, yeah, if you, you modulate the amp, you're just going to get tremolo and uh, that's cool and everything, but it's not like the biggest, most important modulation on the list of a synthesis to be able to do tremolo, which is fair enough. That's kind of true. Uh, we don't usually need a whole lot of tremolo. It's a nice effect to be able to have, but it's maybe not worth the expense of someone actually putting the knob there and putting the function in and whatever. But because this is an LFO mod, we have other waveforms to work with. But first, let's have a listen to tremolo, just for fun. Let's have a good old fashioned tremolo sound. Remember, tremolo is a variation in amplitude, whereas vibrato is a variation in frequency. I'm sorry, guitar amps everywhere. So that's cool to be able to have though. I mean, to be able to do this is very nice. You can have it more mellow. Not too bad. Okay, but then let's also remember that this LFO goes into the audio range. So let's hear what happens then if we jack this up into audio range. Sometimes I think maybe the keyboard is controlling the LFO speed. Uh, but anyway, you get that cool sound, which is Amplitude modulation, actual amplitude modulation, which is very akin to, uh, it gives you some sort of similar effects to ring modulation. 
there's some connection between the two. I know George Matson is saying Mark and shaking his head. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's a great effect. 